Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest. Time to do a group video on four companies that achieved an operational cash flow positive June quarter. And for various reasons, I've decided not to do a standalone video on any of these companies. And I'll talk about why that is so when I talk about these companies on an individual basis during this video. These companies range from an oyster farmer or seller to two oil and gas producers based in Canada and a contract sales organization. First company I want to talk about today in this video is that oyster farmer. So let's get into it. That oyster producer, farmer, um, seller is Angel Seafood, tick code AS1. Market cap of only $20 million at 12.5 cents. And we do have their cash receipts and operating cash flow half year numbers based off their June quarter results. So cash receipts 3.8 million, so not too high. I have no knowledge um, on oysters, how much they sell for. I have no desire to buy any oysters at all. So uh, that's one of the reasons I'm not that interested in this company. But there's, there's another bigger reason as well. And they were operating cash flow negative for the half year, 600,000, but if you look at the the June quarter, they were operating cash flow positive 600,000. Now it'll become obvious why there's a discrepancy between the half year and the quarter results. When we look at their cash receipts history, there's definitely, or oysters are definitely seasonal, and there's always one quarter that is affected, um, just looking at the last two years. Uh, and cash, $2.5 million of cash at the end of the quarter, and they are in debt by $5.1 million. I do prefer companies this size not to have too much debt or any debt at all because in the long run, it can really decimate the company or business if management aren't too careful. So let's have a look at the cash receipts and you'll notice there is always one quarter that uh, cash receipts are much lower than the others. One thing going for Angel Seafoods is they are growing receipts through time. We do have history going back to the March quarter 2008 which was only $230,000. So this company is growing. That is one positive thing about this company. If you do look at the March quarter 2020 and the March quarter 2021, you notice a massive dip in receipts for that one quarter. So there is potential that oyster farming selling is affected on that quarter. It's only two years of history, so it's a small sample size, but it does look like there might be some seasonality to this business, but then you see a massive jump up from the June or the March quarter to the June quarter, and this was their best quarter this company has experienced during the lifetime on the ASX. The main reason I'm not that interested in Angel Seafood is simply because they are a farming business, and I do think farming is a really hard business to succeed in the long run because there's a lot of things that are out of your control that can affect the performance of your business. Well, not I was going to say droughts, but droughts were in effect annual seafood, but uh, just a blight, some sort of virus that could kill off all your oysters, that sort of thing, out of the control of the farmers in the short to medium term. And we see a lot of agricultural companies experience that on occasion. Uh, Costa Group did experience that a few years ago. Not only did they have to deal with droughts, but they also had to deal with um, blights on mushrooms, that sort of thing. So let's have a look at the chart for Angel Seafood to see if there's any excitement in this company in the market right now. This is the weekly chart for Angel Seafood going back to, would it be 2018 when they listed on the ASX and really nothing exciting at all here in the weekly chart. Share price has been going sideways. You do get these waves just like every single share price will go up on positive sentiment, down on negative sentiment. If you could ride those waves and time it, now that would be awesome. You could actually make a fair bit of money out of companies like this. You can see the bottom of the wave in March or during the COVID-19 financial panic, share price got down to 9.5 cents. And then within about six months, the share price had risen or doubled in share price. So if you can take advantage of these waves, I would go ahead and um, maybe try to do that sort of strategy. But I wouldn't try to do that personally. Share price has been falling over the past eight months from around about 20 cents to a current share price of 12.5 cents. So not a lot of volume either uh, through these three years of history. Mark, that's telling us that the market is not that excited about this company. If they can continue growing their receipts through time, if they can continue being operational cash flow positive on a quarterly basis, including the March quarters, then potentially the market will become more and more excited about Angel Seafoods. 
I would want to get a bit more of an idea on the market of oysters. Is it growing? Um, are there a lot of oyster farmers? I would assume there are, and maybe they could try to consolidate um, into or the oyster farmers into one big uh, company. Uh, otherwise, no interest in this company at this point in time uh, because of the business and because of the technicals right here. Now on to the first of the Canadian oil and gas producers, and that is Kalima. There is a major, reasons, major reason why I have little interest in this company right now. I will follow the fortunes of Kalima moving forward. There is potential they made a transformative acquisition or merger in April of 2021. So that's only four months ago. And it seems like based off the June quarter results, this could be changing um, this company. So it could be company changing um, acquisition or merger. I think it was a merger. Anyway, the main reason I'm not interested in this company right now is simply because of the shares on issue. Uh, they did issue something like 8 billion shares for this merger. Shares on issue increased from 2 billion to 10.4 billion. And the current market cap, 82 million, that's a share price of 0.8 cents. When you have a lot of shares on issue, and you get down to less than one cent, you get a lot of pip traders. And those are the sort of traders who will buy in at 8.8 .8 cents and then try to sell at 0.9 cents. Um, we have seen a share price get as low as 0.6 cents. And since this merger has been completed, we see a massive amount of um, share trading in this company. So you get a lot of those pip traders. And that's the main reason I don't have any interest in buying this company because the movement on the share price up will be hard uh, the best thing management could do, in my opinion, is do a share consolidation, a hundred to one share consolidation, decreasing the shares on issue from 10.4 billion to 100 million. That would mean the share price would increase to 80 cents and immediately get rid of all those pip traders. When we look at their June quarter results, cash flow from receipts or receipts from, ca from customers up over $10 million and our operational cash flow positive for the quarter, 1.8 million. So that's one quarter. If they can continue that through the next few quarters, if the price of oil remains elevated around $70 per barrel, now this company is generating a fair bit of cash. They do have a little bit of debt, 17 or $15.6 million of net debt. So it's really all about that uh, shares on issue. If they do change that, do a share consolidation, I might become a little bit more interested in this company. And based off this slide, it was a merger with Black Spur Oil Corp. It was, if I actually did write this down, I should have referred to this. Uh, yeah, April 2021, $37.9 million of equity financing, which was 5.4 billion of shares, and then $17.5 million of shares given to Black Spur. So this was a merger, becoming a leading mid-tier oil and gas producer in Canada. Uh, and when we look at the Kalima chart going back, this is the weekly chart, going back to 2015, we saw a massive decrease in the share price during 2019 when it went from about five cents all the way down to 0.2 cents. And we know when this merger was completed because we see a massive spike in volume from then on. So it was around about the, uh, we'll say April or May, and share price has been going sideways since then. So the share price increase for this company will be hard going uh, simply because of the amount of shares on issue and where the share price is right now. And I'm just be looking out for possible share consolidation for this company. There might be some reasons why they don't want that. I don't know what that would be, but I think uh, this company trading at 80 cents would be much better than it trading at 0.8 cents. The other Canadian oil and gas producer, Explorer, and they also have um, a gas resource in WA, is White Bark Energy. There is a major reason why I'm going to be ignoring this company for the most part, and that reason is simply because this company's shares haven't been traded for seven months since the 12th of January 2021. We'll talk about that um, in the next slide when we look at the chart, I believe. Tico for this company is WBE. I did have actually look at this company about three or four years ago uh, when the market was a little bit higher. Uh, right now, it's only $14 million at 0.4 cents. So very similar than Kalima. The only difference between Kalima and White Park Energy is just the shares on issue. Uh, fair more, fair 
greater amount of shares on issue for Klima than White Bark. Cash receipts, 3.8 million uh, for financial year 21. Operational cash flow negative for the financial year. However, when we look at the June quarter results for White Bark Energy, we see a massive increase in the receipts of customers in the one quarter up to 1.5 million. So they are starting to produce a little bit more oil and gas. And that means the company was operational cash flow positive for the June quarter, 592,000. Now in saying that, they did lose over $200,000 of cash because of investing and financing activities and finished a quarter at $447,000. I did read, and I skimmed over this, they did do a capital raising for working capital to maintain the running of this business. So even though they are operational cash flow positive, they're still having to raise capital to keep the business going because they are losing cash in the financing and investing activities. The main reason I did a little bit of research on White Bark Energy a few years ago was because this company was in operations. And I am looking for mining companies that are in operation and can grow uh, through time. And White Bark Energy have shown um, they cannot grow their operations until the last quarter, but we'll see if they can continue that momentum moving forward. So even though they have had revenue on a half yearly basis approaching about $1 million, and actually getting higher, in fact, we did see one half year where they had $2 million of revenue. Most half years, they have been operational cash flow negative. That can put a strain on a company, even if they are in production, because you continually have to do capital raisings to continue the functioning of the company. They had one half year, the second half year of 2020, where they were operational cash flow positive by 130000 so this is the reason why I did a little bit of research on this company. Now, I didn't see much potential for growth in the long run, so I decided to stay out. On to the weekly chart for White Bark Energy, which goes from the middle of 2015 to January 2021. And the last time this was traded was on the 12th of January at 0.4 cents. A lot of volume, 87 million on the 11th and then 60 million on the 12th. So even though they don't have as much shares on issue as Kalima, they still do have a fair few shares on issue based off these volumes. And the reason they went into a trading halt is a little bit concerning. It has to do with uh, regarding the outcome of a review of White Bark's investment in its wholly owned Canadian subsidiary, Salt Bush Energy, that is material to the company. Salt Bush Energy is the owner and operator of the group's Wizard Lake oil and gas project. That review is still going to this date, so it's been going for over six months. In their quality report, they did say they hope this review is completed in the next three months. And once it is completed, potentially we will see this company uh, being traded again. I wouldn't imagine it's going to be good news, mostly good news, unless they can have another good September quarter and they can start growing their cash instead of losing their cash. Last company I want to discuss is Pharma Force. They describe themselves as a contract sales organization. I did have a little bit of a read about what they do. Most of that went over my head and I can't regurgitate exactly what they do. So I won't really focus on that because in the long run, I don't have much interest in this company. There's two reasons why I don't have much interest. And the first one is when you look at the June quarter results, this company is operational cash flow positive on a quarterly and a yearly basis. And on the yearly basis, $4.3 million of cash flow. And for a market cap of only $6.8.6 million, that could be enticing. My main concern here is this company is a subsidiary of another company called IQ Group. And over the past year, PharmaForce has given their parent, IQ Group, $3.2 million um, as funding for short-term working capital, which suggests to me the parent of PharmaForce is in financial problems or stress. If PharmaForce wasn't giving that money to their parent, this company would be a little bit more enticing simply because they are highly operational cash flow positive for a company with only a market of 8.6 million. And PharmaForce themselves actually did lose $500,000 of cash in the most recent quarter down to $634,000 because they keep giving money to their parent. They gave $1.7 million in this quarter to their parent. If they didn't have to do that, again, this company would be a little bit more enticing 
for me. But there's another major reason why I have no interest in this company, and we'll get to that in a second. PharmaForce did list on the ASX towards the end of 2015, and the main reason why I kept following this company over the next three or four years is because receipts were growing um, through time, and that's exactly what you want to see for a company you might be thinking about investing in. Unfortunately, over the past two years, receipts have been going sideways. What I would want to see uh, for the sake of management and potentially for the sake of the group company because they keep taking money from pharma forces to see receipts start moving in an upwards trend. Up until then, no reason to buy into this company. But there is another reason why I have no interest in pharma force. It become quite evident when we look at the chart. And even though the share price has fallen by quite a bit since they listed on the ASX, and the share price have been going sideways over the last few years, it has to do with the liquidity of this company. In fact, there are periods where this company's shares aren't traded for more than one month. And that is a serious issue for not only me, but a lot of participants on the market. When we look at the weekly chart for Pharma Force, going back to when they listed on the ASX in 2015, and the share price back then was between about 30 cents and 36 cents. We did see the sell off in this company's shares over the next three years. In fact, the share price fell from 36 cents to a low of six cents in the middle of 2018. The major problem I see with Pharma Force shares and the company right now is just the liquidity in the trading of this company's shares. And you can just tell by looking at the weekly chart that there is not much trading in this company. And to prove that, when we look at the trade history of Pharma Force, uh, the last over the last three months, it's only been traded on six days. In fact, there was a period here between the 2nd of July and the 6th of August when there was not one single trade in this company. And that is a problem I do have because if there is a bit of bad news flow in this company, uh, no one will be willing to buy because there's a very few people willing to buy right now. But if there's bad news, there's going to be even fewer people willing to buy and you're going to have problems selling out unless the share price falls by a significant amount, 50 or 60%. In saying all that, the flip side is also true. If this company does go through a period where there is positive news coming into the business, you will see the share price take off because there will be no willing sellers. But because that news flow is coming through to the market, there are going to be more participants willing to buy into this company. And you would be able to see a rapid rise in the share price if that does happen. Now, if you're willing to hold on to this company for five to 10 years, that is your strategy with this company because you think this company will be growing over that period of time. Potentially now is a good time to buy into PharmaForce because a market cap of around $9 million uh, in they are operational cash flow positive by over $4 million. There is that potential that this company is undervalued right now. That is all I have for this June quarter report on Kalima Energy, White Bark Energy, Angel Seafood and PharmaForce. If you have any questions or any insights on any or all these companies, I'd love to hear it from you. Otherwise, I'm not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.